Today is Thursday, June 24th. This is another episode of the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. My name is Alex. I said, fuck it. Might as well start the next season the next day, right? I'm up in the air between making them 20 episodes or 30 episodes. I think I'm going to go with 20 while it's just me. Uh, Then... When I start introducing uh, guest speakers and or publish interviews, then we might move that up to 30, depending on how busy things get. That being said, we're going to up the ante some, and uh, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about... <coughs> more contentious topics, more taboo topics. I mean, this podcast has always been taboo, relatively, because nobody wants to admit that corporate is dirty. Nobody wants to think that we grow up from children to adults just to be dirty, but we are. Some people are just naive to that fact or oblivious and uh, I suppose the difference is obliviousness is uh, just not knowing not knowing it's occurring while naivety is uh, experiencing it and naivety can be Naivety can be, uh, I suppose, destroyed, while obliviousness is the function before that destruction. And some folks remain oblivious their entire lives, while those who are naive someday sometimes somehow they learn and their uh, innocence their obliviousness their innocence is destroyed and their obliviousness is cured but that's only through lived experience if you haven't lived it if you haven't experienced it um, then you likely are not growing, I want to say, then you likely are not learning. You're likely still naive. And I'm going to go with naive for the most part. Most folks are naive. Very, very few, exceedingly few, and exponentially few people are completely oblivious. And those that act like they are, or those that are, I want to say more than likely have some kind of mental pathology. Why? Because being oblivious, uh, remaining oblivious requires effort to an extent. It requires effort. And I have met some pathological people in my time over the course of my life in uh, the few careers that I've held and the many jobs that I've had. And um, those uh, pathological people, they give off a certain vibe they really do give off that vibe of obliviousness that vibe of obliviousness and it's creepy it's creepy to an extent why because you have to ask yourself how blind do you have to be and to it gets to a point where you believe that it's self-serving that it comes out of selfishness that it, it arises out of selfishness while 
there is a medical explanation for it. It's not a medical justification. It's not because it could it can be addressed through affirmative action on an individual's part through conscious effort, conscious action on an, on the individual's part. So remaining oblivious, that too takes effort. It requires that you ignore issues, that you ignore problems, symptoms, to social disease, social illness, ailments, problems and conflict. It requires, it requires you, you must remain oblivious. Whereas someone who's naive will pretty much learn with those bumps in the road, they will learn how to steer. I suppose that's why pathological people can't hold on, can't hold the, cannot hold the conversation to save their lives. Pathological people cannot hold on to relationships to save their lives. It sucks. And I get that. I get it. It sucks. I do believe it's a spectrum. We're all on it somewhere. For some, uh, for some matters. It's important though, that we realize, it's important that we realize, (coughs) hold on, I think. (laughs) <laughs> There's a cop next to me. Dude, cops are driving these uh, Dodge Avengers now. Completely, completely undo, too. Undercover. No fucking markings. That's crazy. That's wild. State plates, too. Not even government. Not even government plates. That's fucking wild. whatever it's our tax money at work I suppose doesn't mean we can't burn our own property right we can do whatever we want with what we own Um, that's neither here nor there pathological people it's it becomes imperative for a pathological person to find something new to continue moving and it's not because they enjoy the change it's not because they uh, they want something new more so it's it's because they need it they, they, they need new direction Because uh, what's constant, what's consistent, isn't just boring for them. It's fucking suffering. It's it's suffering having to do the same thing every day. And again, we're all on that spectrum. We are all on that spectrum. Because for many people, it sucks to do the same thing every day. If you don't enjoy what you do, that's why they say, if you do not enjoy what you do, you'll grow to hate it. So I suppose that's kind of what, uh, what mental pathology gets you. It gets you hate. It begets you hate. If you aren't doing something that you enjoy doing, 
and you aren't doing it differently every day. Now that concept of enjoying what you do and finding ways to do it every day, key word being finding, that again requires conscious effort, affirmative action on the individual's part. That's the struggle. That's the suffering. And folks will drag themselves through the same routine every fucking day, unaware that they have the power to continue searching, to search and research and look for and find. I suppose that's hell. I suppose that is hell. And it's understandable why a pathological person having no uh, creativity to find that essence, that type of that type of essence grows the hate learns the hate keep in mind that I'm only talking about one extreme too there's many extremes just like there is the extreme of hating there's also the extreme of loving and little by little I want to say I'm training myself to push myself towards uh, towards the power of love and rationalize most everything through love. You could say it's like a uh, it's like exercising psychopathy. It's exercising uh, psychology on my own self. that way you can take the mundane you can take you can take the boring the uh, monotone and you can make it enjoyable you can make it enjoyable that's that's the power of the mind that's the power of imagination and it can be done it's easy It's like flipping a switch. Well, I mean, it is now. Now it's like flipping a switch. Whereas before it required, you know, some some initiation and uh, some uh, growing, uh, well, overcoming some resistance, some mental resistance to exercising that psychology, that positive psychology. But more and more now I'm I'm beginning to I'm beginning to develop the ability. No, I'm I am developing the ability to just switch at the flip Hold on, to change. To change attitudes? To change my attitude? No, to change my outlook. Not even my attitude. To change my outlook at the flip of a switch. There you go. That's it. So with time, I'm developing the ability to change my outlook, to change my perspective on life, on death, on love, on hate, as if on the flip of a switch, as if with the flip of a switch. Damn, not bad for a Thursday. (laughs) That's some corporate cowboy shit right there. So that way when the boss hands down some orders that you have to carry out, Orders that you cannot necessarily question. Orders that might seem routine, that might seem mundane, that might seem uh, below or above your role in an organization. 
you, you don't feel bad. You don't feel bad about it. You uh, are able to accept it. You're able to embrace it. You're able to enjoy it. It's as if the boss is drawing lines for you, outlining what your objectives are. And then you can choose to color them any way you like. Um, hmm, it's the first time I've said um, I think, in this one. Because now I'm thinking what colors, what colors go best with which situations. I feel like uh, it depends. I feel like it definitely... It depends. <laughs> Fucking lawyers. It depends. Based on the situation, if it's something serious, I personally, myself, uh, I've... I have contemplated, I've always considered what the world would look like in grayscale. And whether or not I could... I could tell the difference. And I suppose I could if I grew up with it. But if I became colorblind one day to the next, um, I don't think a lot would change. I don't think a lot would change. Because as humans, we have the ability to, to to wear our accessories where our accessories don't wear us. I mean, yeah, there are some people who who live by name brands and they have to match but I believe so long as the style is consistent a lot of the color shouldn't matter and I'm talking style why because it's it's people take in uh, people take in culture through style not color style folks say that they oh people eat people consume food people consume food with their eyes first or whatever or with the smell but when it comes to culture I genuinely believe it's uh, it's the style it's the style men women they all want independence they all want a um a form of independence, at least mutual respect, if not independence, because there are codependencies, there are interdependencies, and intradependencies. I mean, we have to we, we have to trust ourselves and depend on ourselves to not fucking commit suicide from one day to the next. But again, that's more that's more on the extreme side. It's probably an aspect uh, we aren't ready to dive into. Although I did make an episode on the first half of self-sabotage. If y'all want to look that one up. <clears throat> so, in overcoming the lack of independence... It becomes important, it becomes imperative that the style, that the style with which we proceed to interact with one another is seamless, is mutual, and not parasitic in nature. Because yes, there are those who are oblivious to parasitism and there are those who are naive to it depending on which end you're on either the uh, the parasite or the host end but people learn people learn and people grow People learn and people grow to either not accept parasites, to reject them, to rebuke them. 
for me, it's funny finding them, searching them out, and ending their relationship. It's so satisfying. <laughs> that's, that's definitely a topic for another episode. It's so satisfying. It's like um, when I was younger, my goal was to uh, yeah, when I was younger, my goal was to be a, a villain's villain, if that makes any sense. To be a villain's villain. I wanted I wanted notoriety. I wanted to be nefarious. I wanted to rob roller I wanted to rob robbers and steal from stealers. I wanted to kill killers. And then I realized that those people who rob, steal and kill um they're not all evil people. They're not all bad people. It's all contextualized. It's all contextual and it's able to uh, be justified depending on which side of the relationship you were on, whether you're a parasite or a host. And yeah, the parasite can be much bigger than the host. So if the host turns around, robs the parasite, steals from the parasite, or kills the parasite, I mean, is the host in the wrong? Is, is the host wrong for doing so? Definitely makes you wonder. Definitely uh, opens up to new perspective. And that's good because new perspective is what we need every day, especially when what we do is live in the mundane. We have to make this shit look good. Otherwise, there won't be another generation. There will always be corporate cowboys. 